Welcome to another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line. And in this special edition, Florida Chamber President Mark Wilson breaks down the final week, if it is, at the legislative session. Four billion dollar budget gap. The budget is the most important thing lawmakers have to do. Will they get it done? And what will define it? Yeah, thank you, Ron. I, I think that they will get it done on time. Uh, and remember, if you go back a few months ago, what we were looking at is a worldwide economy that was going through change. And Florida's economy is going through change. And no matter what side of the aisle you're on, job number one is job creation. We started this year off with about a 12% unemployment rate. And we said that what we needed to do in Tallahassee was close the budget gap without raising taxes, without raising fees. And, and we believe at the Florida Chamber that that's exactly what this legislature is going to deliver. So has the cuts that have been necessary to get this budget balanced, which it's not yet, uh, been evenly distributed across education, environment, social services? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, that, that's one of the stories that hasn't been told yet this year. And that is that what you do with your family and what you do in your small business is you, you cut and you invest based on your priorities. And so what we're doing here in Florida this year, finally, is the legislature is saying we're going to cut out those processes and agencies that get in the way of job creation. And we're going to do the best we can to hold harmless or even invest more in the areas of, uh, that, we can, uh, that we can help create private sector jobs. And as you said at the top of the program, jobs and economic development, high priorities in this session. The right. reform of our economic development or the consolidation of it, how has that taken shape? Right. So if you look at Florida's economic development structure, you, you're talking about Enterprise Florida, Workforce Florida, Space Florida, Visit Florida, and, and many other public-private partnerships. The system was designed 20 years ago, during a time when Florida was one of the cheapest places to live in the country. We have no personal income tax. And so we had over 1,100 people a day that were moving to Florida. And it really didn't matter how fast you were in terms of economic development. So this year, there was a major move to consolidate the economic development process into a faster, simpler machine, if you will. Uh, the House and Senate had different ideas on that. And at the end of the day, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to simply uh, allow our new Secretary of Commerce, Grace Swope, to have a lot more um, decision-making power so that we can make economic development decisions faster. And we're also going to give the governor a little more authority in terms of uh, closing fund and getting deals done. So Florida is going to be much faster and in much better shape uh, a week from now after this session's over because of the speed that we've added into the process. Very interesting. Can you highlight for us also what will the session be remembered for when it comes to regulatory reform? Well, of course, and that, that's one of uh, Florida's black eyes over the last 10 years is as, as Florida's grown, our government's grown, and oftentimes we have redundant systems or redundant policies and procedures when it comes to regulations on small businesses and on all businesses. And of course, that raises uh, our taxes, that makes doing business in Florida and living here more expensive. So a couple of examples that we're looking at, first of all, on the seaport security, for example, we have 14 deep water ports, yet Florida is the only state in the country where we have two layers of security. And that makes our ports more expensive and a bit slower. This year, the legislature is finally going to get rid of that dual layer of security. Uh, what we're also looking at, we have an opportunity to streamline the growth management process in Florida. You, know, you never want to go too far. You always want to have a good balance. But we're going to go pretty far down the road this year to getting rid of some of the uh, burdensome state oversight, if you will. Well, critics are already saying that that dismantling of the growth management law that's been on the books for so long is going to lead to the kind of unbridled growth that Florida was infamous for 30, 40 years ago. Is that so? Well, of course it's not. Uh, what people need to remember is the business community, at the end of the day, we want to be able to hire people and quality of life, not just today, but five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, is a very important factor in terms of what you do with property, what you do with land, and where you put your investments. And so I think that, remember, some of the critics of the Florida Chamber-backed positions, especially on growth management, some of the critics are the same ones who would like to put a gate at the border who would say, we're closed, we don't want anybody else to be here, we don't want to create any more jobs. And so the first thing we have to understand is not everyone agrees that we need to think long term when we make these short term decisions. Very brief comment about pension reform. Florida is one of the last states to now require public employees to contribute to their own retirement. Good thing? 
Right. Oh, it's a, it's a great thing. And what it looks like is we're going to settle in on 3% contribution, which is a good start. We still, over the next few years, need to get to defined contributions. We still need to make the system healthier over the long term, but this is a great start. Well, Mark, talking to the Florida legislature, what's your advice to them, the bottom line for getting through this week and getting out on time? Right. Well, I think that uh, getting out on time is less important than making sure the priorities are in the right place. And I think that uh, what we said is that the legislature has a once in a generation opportunity here to reset the state budget for long term job creation. And my advice to the legislature is don't give in to all the special interests that are saying uh, to fund everything, uh, to keep things the way they are. This is your opportunity to reset Florida forever. And I think you should be bold and go for it. Florida Chamber President Mark Wilson, thank you for that strong perspective. And we hope your bottom line is looking up. Thank you.